Thank you to DistroKid for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. So when beat making, I usually like to do things from scratch, but there is that occasional time where I pull up a loop and I use that as a starting off point to create a whole production around it, and that is exactly what we're doing today. Now, before we get started, if you're brand new at this production thing and you just need a little bit more help, then I have a free gift for you today, friend, and that is my six-step guide to producing a professional beat. This is a simple PDF guide that you can use to start making your own beats without breaking the bank in as little as one hour. So then if you want that guide, it is totally free, and all you have to do to get it is click the first link down below. But okay, jumping into Studio One, this is what the loop sounds like. Take a listen. Now, a lot of people like to chop up their samples and make something totally different so they don't have the same thing as what they brought in, and that's totally cool, but in this case, I really like the vibe of what I have, and I think I can add enough on top of that to make it into sort of a different idea anyway, so I'm gonna keep it the way it is. Now, the loop here says that it's at 110, and if I were to do that, this is what that sounds like. Let me turn on the metronome. So here's the thing, I want to create some sort of like, it might not be full R&B, but just like a slower kind of like melancholic vibe. And if I were to program this beat at the moment with the, the snare on the back beat, then it would sound a little too fast. Right, so what I have to do is either make this into full time and then program the, the snare on three, so like this. Or what I could do is just half this tempo make it 55 and then let me make sure the sample here is good that also works I think I'm gonna do this I'm gonna keep it at 55 although it's still a little too slow so I might just bump this up to 60 and then let's readjust the sample here duplicate it and there we go that sounds good Okay, from here, we're already in the drum, so let's go ahead and start to uh, program these out. I always like to keep like a hi-hat, like a steady hi-hat. Almost an unchanged hi-hat. I like to layer my hats, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. But this one just kind of keeps that constant pulse. I'm also going to go over, and I'm using my Beatmaker's tool right here, by the way. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select, edit, select the upbeat. And then we're gonna lower the velocity here. Actually, no, I changed my mind. We're gonna go and we're going to do 16th notes. And then once again, we're gonna go over to select this time though, because we're in a different subdivision. Let's do every other note, reverse selection, and then 50. There you go. Little bounce. From here, I can probably start to create that kick drum just to kind of finish it out. I'll probably come back a little bit later on to add more stuff to the drums. But for now, let's go ahead and just start to program the kick. The one and the three are always great places to start with the kick because this is basically in a four bar loop. It's the, the starting point, start and end point. So it always sounds great, right? And you can even see it here, if I go up, the sample starts again on the three. So the one and the three are always great places for that kind of thing. From there, let's just kind of feel it out and see where we want that kick. Boom, boom, right? Some, some simple, don't have to be crazy. And then from there, what we could probably do is just duplicate this entire thing. So three here, we're gonna do copy and paste. Um, I'm gonna come back down in a little bit and, and kind of flesh this out a little bit more, but I do want to start adding something else to the melody so we don't sound just like the loop. So what I'm gonna do is this says it's in B minor, just so I remember, I'm gonna keep this up here. 
Where are you? B minor. From there, I'm gonna use one of my favorite new plugins here called Captain Chords. If you are brand new to music theory, by the way, this and Scalar are like my go-tos. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video, either of these companies, but I just really like what they, what they have going on. So definitely check them out. I'm gonna do B minor, and then we're gonna program. It looks like this might just be like a two chord progression kind of thing. And if we're in B minor, then chances are the first chord probably is a B minor. That sounds pretty good. A little high, but we can always bring that down. Okay, let's add a second chord here. Um, I guess we could, just for, we could try to figure out, right? Okay. So this is a C, D, E, F, F sharp, and then an E. but I have a feeling that those notes are probably the topmost notes of the chord, like the fifth. Yeah, so check this out. That F sharp that I mentioned, it's that F sharp, the top note of a, of a B minor chord. So the E would probably be the top note of an A. Exactly, look at that. Beautiful. Let's bring this down. I'm gonna bring it over to Serum. Serum has a bunch of great stuff. It's one of probably one of my favorite VSTs. For Captain Chords, now that we have this, we can just, you know, turn this off. And then let me look for Apache real quick. Um, I don't know what I want yet. A kind of like a like a soft pad, atmospheric kind of pad to wrap around the loop and make it sound a little bit more full. Let me see what I can find. I'll be right back. Okay, check it out. I found this pad that has a really cool like ramp up action. It sounds like this. But it's not quite there for me at least. So what I'm gonna do is bring an EQ here and let's do a bit of a filtered preset. Here we go, literally I'm hovering over it. Filtered, right? You could probably even scoot this up a little bit more. And I needed more atmospheric, so I'm gonna do, we could do a, a room bird. Yup. And then maybe just a, Bit of a delay here, a uh, quarter note, but let's make it a filtered delay. Um, now I'm thinking maybe like a, like a melodic riff on top of this, but not like a overbearing kind of thing, if that makes any sense. Cause that's already being provided by the loop. The bum, 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 bum. Dun. No, we just need something like an in-between, like a bum something along those lines. Uh, let me find a right preset first, or the right patch. I kind of want like a like a synthy line, like an 80s kind of, maybe something from Artoria. So let me go ahead and see what I can find here. All right, so check this out. I actually found something again in, in um, Serum. I duplicated the pad track. Oh, you guys hear that? It is storming out there. <laughs> I duplicated the pad track, which basically had the same plugins. And without any of this, this is what it sounds like. Right, not very nice. And then much, much better. So then let's go ahead and create something like a little riff, like a... Yeah, something like that. So it'd be like a... And then uh, maybe something like a bum, 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 like walking back up. Let me get this right. All right, check it out. I got it. Woo! Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Fire. Okay, I don't know if there's anything else that I could maybe do to the melodic part without just making it too overbearing. So I'm gonna go back down to the drums because there's a lot here that we can do to make them a little bit more interesting. And what I'm gonna start off doing is, let's start programming a snap on like every two, right? So it'll be like a, 
but that needs that needs some some help. That needs some some sauce. So we could probably add maybe like um uh maybe one of these guys. Maybe a little bit of a delay. Right? Also, I just want that filtered. There we go, something like that. From here, we could probably also do something with like a hi-hat. So maybe like... And then from here, we can probably go and take this Echo Boy. There we go. Bum, 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 bum. Probably lower this too. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're back in business. This thing knocked down my whole setup, but it's all good. Not today, Satan. So let's keep the vibes moving. This is what we had so far. So I think now we got to spice these drums up a little bit, add a little bit more percussive material. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more like live hats, but I just got a brand new toy. I don't know if you could see it. That little thing right there, it's from a company called Bitme. I think it's an Argentinian company. I love supporting um, smaller companies that make great products. And that basically is like one pad out of an electronic drum set with a button to change the MIDI note. So I'm gonna pair that up with my easy drummer here and I'm gonna set it to one of these hi-hats and then record them by hand to get that live kind of chugging feel and to add a bit more texture to my drums. Let's go ahead and do that now. That'll do it. Uh, we have to make sure that our input quantize is not on. I do not want that on because I want some live sounding hats. All right, so check it out. They're definitely not on the grid, uh, different velocities. I'm actually gonna bring this down maybe like a little bit and then maybe mess around with some of these. But this is what we have so far. All right, y'all, check this out. I went ahead and I did a little digging on Splice here and I found this little like perk loop. And I also found this like second hat that I only took the rolls from and placed them in different places throughout the loop just to kind of get a little bit more spice. The drums now with everything that I added sounds like this. Probably pull this down a little. Right, and then together with everything else, so far we have this. Set so much more texture. Okay, from here I think last but not least we just need some sort of bass. Um, I don't know if I want an 808 or like a bass guitar. If I'm doing a bass guitar, it'd probably be something like doom, 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 boom, boom, boom. Or we could do an 808. Tell you what, let's program both. And then I'll pick one, but you let me know which one you like best. So to program the 808, super simple. I'm just gonna bring this down here. And then I'm just gonna take the root note of each chord. So that'll be a B and an A. And then what I'll do is let me bring up the kick. And then I'm just gonna basically cut it at the kick, right? Here. Here, here, and we can probably spice this up just by sending it up a couple octaves on the ends. Let's bring in a bass now and see how that sounds like, and then we'll try to decide which one sounds better. Okay, so for the bass, I need something subtle. It'll probably be something like a... Ooh, 
that sounded pretty good. So now what we're gonna do here, check this out, I'm gonna show you something really, really simple for programming stuff like this. Go over to the editor, double click on that audio. Go over to audio bend, hit this little eye, the all seeing eye. Then we're gonna do time stretch, Elastic Pro monophonic format. And then let's do analyze. And then we basically get all of these little lines here that we can use to move around and make sure we're on beat. To make it super simple, go over to the, what is it, slice? No, quantize, 100% and apply. And then just basically loop that. All right, y'all, I'm undecisive. I don't know which one to leave. Should I leave the 808? Or you let me know which one I should do in a comment down below, but I think I'm kind of leaning more towards that bass guitar. So I'm gonna just go ahead and mute this. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much done adding things. Now I just need to finesse it a little bit and arrange it. But as I do that, I'd love to take a minute and thank the sponsor for this video, DistroKid. DistroKid is a digital music distributor and the one that I've been using to not only release my own beat tapes, but also recommend to the artists that I work with. And at $20 a year for unlimited uploads, it is by far the most affordable way to release your music to platforms such as Apple Music, Spotify, TikTok, Tidal, Snapchat, and so many more. Now, aside from the hassle-free distribution, you also get a bunch of different features included for free in your subscription. And the best part is that DistroKid is always adding new ones to help you promote yourself and your music. So for example, they recently released a new feature here called the Spotify Canvas Generator. And if you don't know what this is, if you have Spotify, you might have noticed that on certain songs, you have like this looping kind of video in the background as you see on my screen here. This is basically what this new feature allows you to do for free. So for example, my last beat tape was called Muse and it was a very like 80s synth pop kind of feel. So I could type in here, go to type in Neon, pick one of these, It'll crop it for me between three to eight seconds, which is what, what's needed based on Spotify's requirements. From there, you're gonna have the option to either download it or you'll also get instructions on how to upload it directly to Spotify. So they make it really, really easy. This is just one of the many features that come included with your subscription. So if you're ready to broadcast your music to a larger audience, then head over to ivancaldron.com slash distrokid to get 7% off your first year. Okay, so I have the beat fully arranged here. Now I did end up making a few audible calls here at the end and I'll show you what they are in a minute. But basically for the intro, we had the original loop with the pad. For the chorus, that pretty much stayed the same. The only thing that I did different was that I ended up going back to an 808. The bass was okay, but it was too busy for the vibe that I was going for. And I realized that afterwards, I needed something way more like trap soul-ish. And that bass, as groovy as it was, was not giving, giving that to me. So I went to an, another 808, I picked a different 808. But this one, although it felt better and it sounded better, it was a shorter 808 with no sustain in the tail. So it still felt a little empty. So what I ended up doing was I ended up also adding in kind of like this gritty OVO underwater bass. And what I, what I did to make sure that they didn't clash, because there was a lot of that same frequency information for both instruments, is I took an EQ for the 808 and I cut off all the subby frequencies below 25 hertz because the other bass was providing that. On top of that, on the gritty bass, I added this uh, plugin called Track Spacer. I don't even know how to properly describe this thing. This is like a multi-band compressor combined with like a dynamic EQ combined with like a side chain thing going on. I'm not quite sure, but basically you add it to whatever you want it to be affected and then you send a signal to it. So in this case, I'm sending my 808 to the gritty bass and every time that 808 hits, it's like ducking out the frequencies from my gritty bass. Check it out. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Here it goes. It's nuts. It's like $25, $50. Definitely pick it up. This should definitely be in your toolbox. But that was it for the verse, or I'm sorry, for the chorus. For the verse, the biggest difference that I did here was I took that loop, I chopped it up into smaller pieces, and I added a delay to kind of fill in those gaps. I took out the lead, I took out the perk loop for that first half, I took out that live hat that I programmed, and then on the second part for that first little bit, 
I took off the 808, automated the volume of the greedy bass to be higher, and then I also took off the kick. And then I also played around with some drops, but here is the beat, hopefully you like it. But there you have it friends, hopefully you enjoyed the beat and if you did, let me know in a comment down below. Don't forget to download my free six step guide to producing a professional beat. Thank you once again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Thank you for your time and I'll see you on the next one.